let's talk about the Joker because this is um, <laughs> uh, this is a story that's blown up today, right? Uh, Joker sequel in the works with Todd Phillips planning yet another DC character origin movie. This is this was what was going on today. This was what was what was huge about today. I woke up this morning after having done five stories last night and been like, oh man, I can't uh, I can't talk about that until tonight. Damn it! But it's not without its own controversies. So saying here, Joker is a huge hit, probably headed towards several Oscar nominations, and it just became the first R-rated movie to cross one billion at the worldwide box office. That kind of attention studios thrive on and want more of. And sure enough, after we uh, sure enough after weeks of speculation, it looks like Joker sequel is officially happening. Director Todd Phillips, Pitch Warner Brothers, Picture Group Chairman Toby Emmerich on an idea to develop a Joker style origin stories for multiple DC characters. And while Emmerich didn't fully go for the idea, Phillips did get the rights to develop a film on at least one character, meaning he's now working on both a Joker sequel, which will likely bring back Joaquin Phoenix and another Joker influenced DC origin film. And that is fascinating. Another DC style origin film. A lot of people are saying like Riddler or Penguin or something. And I think if we got like the emotional background of these villains, it could make for very interesting social commentary and looking at the woes of society and what would frame someone to become a mass murdering asshole, right? One of Batman's rogues galleries of villains, but it only works on so many levels. If you don't introduce Batman at some point in time, you're just kind of blowing smoke up the audience's ass. And you are, I don't care what anyone says at this point. You are, if you don't introduce Batman and have there be a fight, people aren't going to stick around very, very long. Joker works as a single standalone movie, not connected to the DCEU at large or to the DC universe at large. It's almost like the anti-comic book movie, because even though it's designed to not to be like, according to Todd Phillips, a good movie, wrapped in a comic book film it's one that still pulls from its origins of of the joker which is why it's familiar but it does it in a way that is is very interesting to have see that discussion play out which is why it's hit the billion dollars but i think it should stay where it's at stay in its lane don't go too far you go too far you run the risk of screwing it up and we're going to talk about that here too in a minute so according to this one update because first it was Hollywood Reporter saying this. Uh, then it says Deadline is saying that it's actually incorrect and that multiple sources said no such October 7th meeting between Phillips and Emmerich occurred and that Phillips hasn't even considered overseeing other DC character films. Okay, so that's one thing. Then you've got Variety jumping on in, right? Because of course, you know, Hollywood Reporter talks about it. Deadline chimes in. Variety's going to roll and go like, guys, we want to come to the party too. And they say that they decided uh, that they said the original story is half true, right? Because they're going to play Sweden on this run. Warners is exploring a sequel with Todd Phillips, but nothing has been finalized and no scripts are currently being written. As for the report of the separate DC character origin film, that's false, at least according to Variety. But the story continues. So they kind of talk about the same, the rest of the story here. They kind of go through everything, right? But it goes on to say for the sequel. And it says, as for the Joker sequel, Joaquin Phoenix is likely to return. Warners has sequel options with the actor and is sure they're working on a deal to net Phoenix a huge payday. And then perhaps Phoenix will, will go dance down those steps to celebrate. But just what the heck would a Joker sequel focus on? Will Phoenix's Arthur Flex slash Joker rise into the full-blown crim crime lord we know from the comics? That would seem to go against everything in Joker, which is more of a small scale character study. But one thing seems certain. While the young Bruce Wayne appeared in Joker, don't expect Batman to pop up in the sequel since the Cape Crusader is clearly in the hands of director Matt Riggs uh, uh, for now. now. And then it goes on to say that many of my colleagues have soured on Joker or didn't even care for it to begin with. And this is this is where we start talking about access media and how, how jerky they were. Um, but uh, then this last line here I find fascinating. Hopefully Phoenix or Phillips can come up with a better screenplay this time around. Look, I would argue that the screenplay which is the skeleton of the film is arguably the best part outside of the performance by Joaquin Phoenix. And to sit there and say, hopefully he writes a better script next time. Yeah. You, when you write a movie, that's a character study. That's all about mental illness and being forgotten by the system. And you frame it in a comic book light and it does over a billion dollars. I think he kind of nailed it out of the park. Right. Am, am, I, am I wrong on that one? People. I mean, I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong at all. 
but of course, you know, Chris Evangelista here is, um, well, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely a bit of a suck up, but what I wanted to talk about, this is, this is the news that I got. Now you may not know who this is and that's okay, but let me tell you who this guy is. This guy is Mikey Sutton. Mikey Sutton has in recent months blown up as this massive, massive online scooper gets all the deets, gets all the info, gets all the intel. He tossed me the information about Snyder Cut coming to HBO Max sometime in 2020. And again, rumor, take with a grain of salt. But he also relayed some information about the situation involving Joker and its sequel and also its sequels. Because if you know anything about how Warner Brothers works, more or less, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get something along the lines of this. The Joker trilogy, directed by Todd Phillips. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm being told. Now, let it sink in. Let it sink in. And then ask yourself, how in the hell are they going to do it? Or, better yet, why in the hell would they do it, right? Why in the hell would you sit there and have the Joker trilogy? Well, the answer to that is simple. And it really is simple. A billion dollars. All right. We can all do the Dr. Evil one billion dollars. You know, it's not, a, you get, you know the meme, but it's a billion dollars. Warner Brothers has the highest or the most profitable comic book movie ever made. You know, when you look at the investment and then uh, the, the budget of it, as well as the take home. They're going to want to double down on that. And they've done it before. We know for a fact that Warner Brothers pulls the cart before the horse all the time, especially when it comes to something that's popular. Matrix 1999, one movie. A couple years down the road, we got Matrix 2 and 3 shot back to back with a massive budget. Both of them came out in 2003. Both of them, eh, fans were a bit soft on. Look at all the shows they've given Greg Berlanti over there on the CW. Not only all the Arrowverse shows, I think there's like six of them now. Five or six of them now. Then they're also going to do DC Universe, which has two, it did have three. And then all of the HBO Max shows. Warner's when it comes to DC Comics, because they're so desperate to take on Marvel, who consistently messes with them time and time again. And that is true. They are in a situation where they are going to find themselves in a world of hurt because they are going to overproduce the hell out of this thing and they're going to rush it just like they did with Hangover 2 and Hangover 3. Because they originally, and I'm not even making this up, after the release of Hangover 2, which I believe opened to about $88 million in May of 2011, one of the, ha the higher-ups at Warner Brothers made a comment about Hangover 4 because we already knew Hangover 3 was greenlit and they were working on it. And he went on to say, what about Hangover 4? Because Warner Brothers is desperate to have a franchise like Harry Potter again. They're desperate to have a franchise like Marvel that just milks money, just milks money. Here what they have is a fantastic small-scale character study about a mentally impaired person left behind by the system, fell through the cracks, felt ignored and just displaced and, and, and not fulfilled. And like he had no purpose in society. And so he turned into a criminal. It's a movie that should not by any stretch of the imagination originally in concept made a billion dollars, but it sparked a conversation. A lot of it had to do with the, the hyped up attacks on it by the media, but it still did it. And the people are still talking about it and they're still seeing it. And it's still having an impact on society. And I don't know if Joker 2 or 3 would be able to actually be able to get to, to recapture that. And I know people out there are going to say, well, they should still try. And I'm usually okay with sequels like this. Like I'm still going to go see it. But I can't help but thinking that if this is the same thing as the Hangover franchise. And this is the same thing as the Matrix franchise. And all the other times Warners has rushed to get something out there in order to beat the competition. That all they're going to do at this point is just screw themselves over. And kill something that is perfectly fine the way that it is.
This video is supported by patrons like you. If you'd like to become a patron, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Matt Jarbo.